Hello there, Leos. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. So um, let me talk about your love life here. What I have is um, I'm feeling like many of you are dealing with a uh, love interest, a love interest. You're not exactly in a relationship with them yet. Um, and the love interest is very, very, very shy. Okay. So the way their energy shows up here, we do have the five of cups. This is somebody that has um, a lot of, you know, um, they, they have a lot of regrets when it comes to their love life in the past. Dating the wrong people, barking up the wrong tree, looking for love in all the wrong places. And so I feel like they, they do have a little bit of emotional baggage that they're bringing into um, future or existing relationship based on their past experiences. And so this is a person that you have to treat with kitty gloves, okay? You have to do things on a consistent basis to show them that they can trust you. And so for many of you, uh, there's a lot of um, coaxing that needs to be done with this relationship partner. A lot of coaxing. This is usually what I call like the heartbreaker type of a card where whoever you're dealing with, they might seem on the surface very friendly, um, quite possibly flirtatious, very easy to talk to, but I feel like deep down they are quite insecure because of their emotional past. Um, I also feel like they, they also have some emotional hang-ups when it comes to their, you know, uh, their exes, okay? There's this man in the background, and it usually indicates to me an ex, an ex that mistreated them or didn't see the value in them. And once they walked away from the ex, the ex, you know, contacts them, begs them to come back and tells them that, you know, you were a really uh, good girlfriend or boyfriend and, you know, I regret what I did. And so they're coming to the realization that they are a really good catch. And because of that, they're, they're kind of um, still healing from the past and they're keeping their feelings kind of close to their chest because they don't want to get hurt again. So you're dealing with somebody that does have emotional hangups and they're very, very cautious and methodical about rushing into new relationships. Okay. Um, the way that you feel about this person, we have here the three of wands, and this is a card here. Uh, you have these angels, they're carrying up the weight of this burden. Okay. There's a, a sense of like waiting for help, waiting for assistance, waiting for somebody to come into the picture to alleviate the burden. And the one's energy deals with passion and chemistry, and it deals greatly with um, inspiration. So I feel like there is really, really, really strong attraction between you and another person. Um, the two of you work well together. So this is a card about teamwork. And when the going gets rough, we know that the other person will be there. They know that you will be there for them. So there's an element here about building something of value together, working collaboratively together, having a mutual sense of goals and, and purpose. And so if the two of you work together, there's a, a sense almost like you both are headed in the same life direction. So for example, if you're a lawyer, they might be, you know, in the, uh, they might be a paralegal, they might be a judge, they might be somewhat related to you when it comes to your same industry. If you're a student, they're a student. If you're a teacher, they might be a teacher. And so if you're a doctor, they might be a nurse. So like you're, you have common professional aspirations, you have common life goals, and you have common purposes. And what I feel with this card is um, this is somebody who's looking for love, okay? Um, I'm drawn to this little cherub right here, this shy one. It's sort of like burying myself in work. I'm very, very busy, but if the right person comes into the picture, I will drop what I'm doing and go for that person. So they are very picky and they are very, very selective about who they spend their time with. Their time might be very limited. They might be on a time crunch. And so they make time to text you back, to communicate with you. They're definitely interested in you. I feel like this person is very coy, like they're, they're shy and they need concrete actions from their love interests in order for them to, you know, take that leap of faith. Okay. You're dealing with someone who's a little bit more insecure about 
am I attractive enough? They're a really good person. I feel deep down. They give a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in their relationships. And they have been taken advantage of in the past. They're dealing with hangups. They're dealing with past disappointments. And so they're not anxious to, you know, jump the gun and just rush into the next relationship. They, they want to find someone who's worthy. Okay. The way that they see you, we have here the strength card. You're very loving, very nurturing, and very caring. And the strength card indicates really strong physical attraction. It's a card about seduction. It's a card really about being able to trust the other person. So they feel calmer around you. They feel more stable, more grounded. And they feel like, you know, they can like sleep in your presence and not have to, you know, keep one eye open, not have to be weary about their surroundings. So there is a lot of trust here that they feel about you. They can trust you with their life. They can trust that you're going to do the right thing. And they can trust that if they were to tell you their deepest, darkest secrets, they trust that you're not going to repeat it to another person. So there is a great deal of trust. There's a great deal of harmony and tranquility in the way that the two of you interact with one another. And the way that they see you is the King of Pentacles. This is like the most reliable person in the entire deck. This is someone who's always going to be around even when things get rough, okay? Um, I like the way he's depicted in, on this, uh, in this deck rather than the Rider Waite deck because this is somebody who's still a warrior He's mobile, he's dressed down, he's not draped in his uh, robe and all the things that weigh him down. This is a man that's on the go. He's worldly, he's adventurous, but he's very, very financially stable. So they see you as someone who's financially stable, very secure. They trust you, you give really good advice. You don't have hidden uh, agendas. Um, there might be a little bit of control issues, you know. Um, if you are in a relationship with them, they sense that you want to control. You are like very, your energy is very alpha, alpha male, alpha female. And it, it makes them feel like on the one hand, they're very, uh, they feel very safe and secure when they're with you because you know what you're doing. But on the other hand, they feel almost like their, their independence is kind of stifled. Okay. So be careful about that. I'm also sensing as well. And you know, the energy can flow both ways, right? And I'm also sensing as well, this is somebody that um, they, they find these qualities about you very, very attractive. And keep in mind, they have dated a lot of bad relationships, partners in the past, barking up the wrong tree, dealing with a lot of disappointment in their love life. And so they might be drawn to the type of men that or women that are a little bit more on the aggressive dominant end. Okay. Um, I feel like what's the outcome for this week when it comes to love and relationships, this person is going to jump when you tell them to jump. I feel like they're moving towards you. They're initiating conversation. They're initiating contact. They're initiating, you know, some type of a new start. Okay. This is like, leaping into the arms of the, the other person. And it's like, I'm going to let my feelings know. So if you make the gesture, if you make the gesture right here and offer them something solid, which I feel like you're going to try to attempt to do with somebody that you have a crush on, they're going to reciprocate by moving towards you. So I feel like there is a, a new beautiful, beautiful uh, energy that can be had with this. I feel there's an element about one person wanting to take care of another person and then the other person wanting to be, um, to, to, to relinquish control and say, I want you to take care of me. So it's a very mutual, uh, res um, one person is receptive, the other person is proactive. So it's a very strong mutual connection. But if you feel like they've been a little bit too passive and too too um too passive when it comes to you know showing their affection they're definitely going to change things and they're definitely going to be moving forward to you 
I see um, commute um, like long distance type of relationship. Somebody might have been traveling for work, and then you're reuniting with your love interest or um, reuniting with your significant other for this month. So for those in stable relationship with the Six of Wands, this is major, major career professional development happening for the both of you that will really, you know, help you overcome financial difficulties, help you overcome a lot of uncertainty and doubts about your relationship, okay? Um, so that's very, very positive overall. Um, in other areas of your life, I feel like for many of you, um, having to save up, okay, having to like watch your spending, and I feel for many of you, you have had to do this possibly for the past three to four years. And for some of you, you might have been in school and, you know, schooling is expensive. You might have been in um, doing um, a four year program and now you're doing a master's program or a PhD program. So I feel like your um, your resources were not um, were not like um, infinite because you were working, you were in school. So, you know, you had to really watch what you spend. And um, I feel for others, you might have a lot of children in the picture, you know, people that you're taking care of. And I see this with a lot of Leo people. Um, you open your homes up to everybody that needs your help. So if you have a, you know, if you have a child, like a teenager, and they're best friends with a teenager, another child, and that child is not treated well at their homes, you open your, up your house to that child not to foster them some of you could be foster parents but i feel like you know you would invite that child over for dinner you would have a meal cooked for them and you can have a bed made for them and tell them you're more than welcome to stay here if um you know if you don't want to go home and i feel like your heart is that big is that generous so there's a lot of people coming and going in your house environment and so finances, I feel for the last three to four years have been very scarce. Okay. And I feel for many of you, you've had to really save up. You've had to, um, you know, kind of watch what you're spending. And many of you are saving up for big plans, big goals, like uh, buying a property, uh, getting a new car. Um, like you don't like to finance things because it gives you a sense of anxiety, having to pay so much in, in interest when you know i can save up and just you know put down a larger down payment and and not have to do the or pay things out um up front and so you were saving up for some big ticket items and i see like new cars um possibly even paying for college tuition or school tuition for children and i feel like you know it it, it was very difficult having to nickel and dime ourselves but it's starting to pay off okay so the past four years dealing with holding on very tightly to your financial resources and this is the time with the three of coins it's like yes I nickel and dime myself but look what I have to show for it so this is like showing your resources being able to finally have the financial resources to do something big okay to contribute to something very, very meaningful, to help out a, a child, to help out family members, to be able to big, get like a big purchase um, for yourself. And so whatever financial difficulties, um, I, I feel as well, some of you, if you're like a single mom, single dad, I also feel this element about the children growing up, they're working and they're helping out, uh, paying bills here and there because they know that you work really hard. And then this is kind of like uh, three three revenue streams coming into the picture. So it could be mom and dad both working and then the child is also working. So I feel like, you know, this is basically really, really good work ethics and being rewarded for your hard work and your savings and, and, and financial, um, financial worries are issues of the past right now. We're sailing away from it. We're moving far away. Some of you could be contemplating, you know, travel as well. We are moving into the holiday season. So this is like making big um, travel arrangements, like big ticket items. Going to the Caribbean is what I'm seeing. Going on a cruise or going to a place where you might, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter. So you might go down south. You might contemplate going to a warmer climate so that you can escape the winter. 
I have as well the Five of Cups. This is a repeat card from earlier. Five of Cups, Five of Cups. And this is kind of like whatever, um, whatever. I, I see some of you, like your kids might want, you know, like, oh, I want the new phone. I want the new um, uh, gaming console. I want the, the new shoes and having to, you know, constantly say, no, 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 I can't afford it. Or um, not feeling like they like, like not feeling like it's worth the money, whatever um, you've those hard conversations saying no to our kids. It's, it's never an easy thing and saying no to children. It's, it's never something that I, I don't feel like, you know, anybody wants to do that. And so many of you had to, you know, um, skirt around these issues for many years. And now you're at a point where you're financially abundant. But I feel almost like you want to instill that sense of, you know, uh, let's look at the value of something and, and let's see if it's worth it for us to buy something like that. Um, just because the market rate says it's, it's that price. So I feel there are issues about, you know, instilling proper values, um, not instilling materialism in your children, wanting them to understand the value of hard work and understanding the value of the hard earned dollars so that they are not frivolous when it comes to their spending. You have a lot of major career success coming into the picture. The sun indicates vitality. It indicates as well um, professional accolades, getting recognition, being kind of in the spotlight and, and having uh, a lot of positive uh, feedback from other people. For those of you who have spent some um, working time working on some type of a collaborative environment where you kind of have to bite your tongue, where you kind of have to tell people I'm doing this and it's working out well for me. I don't know what you guys are doing, but it doesn't seem like it's panning out. You've had to bite your tongue. And so this is the week where things start to, you know, culminate. Whatever you're doing, it's going to start panning out. It's going to pay off for you. And I feel like you're definitely going to feel very emotionally fulfilled professionally and uh, romantically for this week. Okay. I hope the reading has been helpful for you guys, Leos. I'm really happy to see this energy for you guys. And um, I wish you all the best, okay? Um, I'm going to be back next week. And, uh, oh yeah, for those in the U.S., happy Halloween to you guys. Stay safe, of course, um, and have a splendid rest of uh, your month, okay? Take care.